Hello everybody, this is the Gadget Man with Discovering in Color and welcome to today's video. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about ground cloths that go underneath tents. And we're going to talk about two different categories. We're going to talk about just regular ground sheets, but we're also going to talk about footprints and what the difference is between the two. All right, so let's talk about ground sheets. In other words, this is something that you can put under your tent to help protect it from what's on the ground. Now, some of this is judgment and some of this is just old fashioned, uh, uh, what folks did a long time ago, started back in the area when people had canvas tents and you could put down a cloth or something on the bottom to help water from coming up if it was wet. It would also help if there was water draining and stuff like that. You put it under your tent and it would basically help keep the bottom of it dry. Well, as time goes on, tents became more resilient and the floors of tents became a lot tougher. So you'll see a lot of manufacturers will tell you, don't even worry about putting the ground sheet on. You can use the bottom of the tent the way it is and that's going to be a judgment factor. If you have a tent with a very robust floor, you can do that. But just keep in mind, it will take a little more wear and tear than if you actually put some type of a ground sheet down. So today, ground sheets aren't required, but they're a good practice to use. Now, different types you can use really depends on what you're doing. If you're going to be car camping where you can just pull up your car or you're taking stuff a very short distance, then by all means use something very robust such as just a good old plain blue tarp right here. This is pretty handy. They're really cheap. You can put them underneath your tent. They're going to protect the bottom of your tent from abrasions and sticks and rocks and that type of stuff, but not very good if you're going to be carrying stuff on your back. Because if you, you got to carry this big heavy monster on your back, it will wear on you at the end of the day. And it takes up a certain amount of room. This is just a five by seven tarp that I have an example here, but you know, it's got a little bit of heft to it here. And I wouldn't want to carry this all day long. Another option is if you're near a construction site, you can get a piece of Tyvek. Okay. This is the stuff they wrap around houses to um, help with moisture and those type of things. So in itself, it's a very light material. It's a very durable material. I've used this on a number of campouts, and this is something you can put underneath your tent. It's light enough to take backpacking. And even if it gets dirty, no big problem because all you can do is take it and put it in a washing machine. You can wash it up. And the more you use it and the more you wash it, the lighter it's going to get. You can also customize this a lot easier than customizing a blue tarp because you can actually cut this to fit the size of your tent. And sometimes that's pretty handy because you don't want to carry extra material. Another one you can get, this is just a plastic tarp. This is actually from a manufacturer. Um, this came from Eureka and it's actually cut for the size of my four person tent, my large four person tent. So this is something you can use underneath your tent to help keep it um, from getting the braze. Now this one here, um, can't really see it from there, but it does have a lot of nicks and tears and stuff in it. So that tells me that these nicks and tears could have been on my tent or they could be on this replaceable ground sheet. And I'd rather them to be on this replaceable ground sheet just because it's, it's a lot cheaper to replace. Um, this is a little heavy. I wouldn't take it backpacking, but it is a very nice uh, thing to use underneath the tent. And then finally, if you're into it and you really want to spend the money, this is actually a Dyneema uh, sheet right here. It's actually from Z-Pax and it's, it's big, it's thin, it's very light. This is something you could take uh, backpacking with you. It only weighs three ounces and it's the size that would fit under a tent this size right here or a single person tent. Now you would have to fold it under a little bit and we always recommend you do that if, because when you're camping out and if you have a piece of ground uh, sheet that is too wide for your tent, you always wanna tuck it underneath and you fold it under because if you fold it up, water will cup and get in there. If you fold it under, water should drain off. So you wanna put that under your tent. You don't want any of your ground sheet exposed because if it does rain, I mean, it'll, it'll just act like a, a big um, rain gutter and it'll just pull the water underneath your tent. So whenever you have a tarp, make sure that it is not exposed outside the width of the tent. Otherwise you may wake up with a lot of water underneath you if you get some good rainfall. Next thing I'm gonna go over are tent footprints, okay? Uh, this MSR tent right here actually has what we call a footprint underneath it. It is something that is cut to the tent and it actually can be attached. So when we lift this up here, you can see this right here is a footprint and it's attached to the tent right here where the poles go. So it is actually physically attached to the tent itself. The nice thing is it's the perfect size. It fits under very easily and it's basically for... Uh, uh, to keep it simple, it's really kind of staked out with the tent. So you don't have to worry about it blowing away. You don't have to worry about it moving during the night as you're moving inside the tent. 
and it's pretty light. It's designed to go with it, and it doesn't really add a lot of extra weight to your tent setup. So that's what a footprint is, is something specifically designed to go underneath a tent. It can be attached or it can be unattached, depending on which one you purchase. And finally, one more hack I wanna go over with you with a ground cloth. You can actually, if you have a tent that has a bad floor that you know is leaky, you can actually take your ground cloth, provided it doesn't have any holes in it, like this one does right here, but you can actually take this ground cloth and instead of putting it on the bottom of the tent, you can put it inside of your tent. So that way, if you have a floor that is just no longer waterproof from age or whatever else may have happened to it, and you have a waterproof sheet, this can actually lay on the inside of the tent and any water that comes up underneath the tent will not make it through because you actually will be sleeping on, working on the ground cloth itself instead of the bottom of the tent. So that's another way to get a little more life out of a tent that is pretty much on the way out. You've used it a lot. The waterproofing is going away, especially on the bottom. Um, I've done it numerous times. I had an old Eureka tent that it just reached a point where the bottom was not waterproof anymore. So I started putting a tarp, and it could be any tarp, this tarp, this tarp, anyone. I started putting it on the inside of the tent and that solved the floor problem. Now, when I left, it was wet on the inside, but that's okay. You just hang it up and let it dry. Okay, so that is our video today, talking about uh, tent floors, footprints, and tent tarps. So I highly recommend you get one. Um, using it, it's up to you, it's your discretion. If you're camping on grass like this, eh, don't worry about it, okay? You should be okay. But if you're camping on rocks or any place where there's sticker burrs or cactus or stuff like that, rocks, you know, really rough rocks or that type of thing, then go ahead and get yourself a uh, footprint or a tarp to go on the bottom. So that's it. Take care and see you on the trail.